gang. Let's talk about how you guys can inspect and prep your rods uh, for your engine build. Um, these are the rods that came off the LM7 LS behind me. Uh, I'm not going to be reusing these, but I'm going to show you how um, you can prep them and get them ready to be remachined. Uh, because these are they're probably perfectly fine. Um, they probably need a little bit of work done to them, but in all honesty, they're 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 okay. Uh, but let me go over some things uh, with you that you should look at when you're taking them apart and after. Here we go. All right. So once you get your rod, it's gonna look something like this. Most of you are gonna run into two types of pistons that are on your rod and the type of rod that you have. So you're either going to have a floating piston where your piston is on the rod and it's held in by two clips on each side of the piston. These were what's called a press fit. So these, they, they put it in a machine, they heat it up super hot, they put the piston over it and then they slide the pin in because the heat makes it expand and that way they can get in for, they can push it in for the press fit. Um, I prefer floating pistons, that's just me. Um, the press fit pistons just seem like kind of a pain in the butt to take apart and put together. Um, but they're not bad. There's nothing bad about them. They work just as well. Uh, so when you get your rod, you're gonna wanna inspect it. Um, first of all, you're gonna wanna make sure they're not bent. Um, you're gonna want to look at the main, the housing bore. Uh, you can see on this one, it's kind of blurry, maybe I can get it to focus, that it has bluing on it. So, here. So, this rod is not in the best condition on the inside. You can see that it got really hot. There you go. You can see that this rod got really hot. You can tell by that if it starts to make those bluish marks. It also almost has like um, material transfer from the bearing, um, rubbing so much and getting so hot that it starts transferring the material onto the rod. Um, that's not good. Um, you're gonna wanna get a dial bore gauge after they're all cleaned up or however you're gonna do it. And you're gonna to wanna to measure the housing board to make sure it's still in spec because if you're gonna do a stock rebuild, chances are you probably be fine. Unless something crazy happened with that engine and start of oil and, and everything got warped, um, it's probably no good, but in all reality, if you're gonna do a stock rebuild, if you're just um, gonna put the, um, clean these rods, uh, check them, and if they're within like a thou and spec, you're going to have no problem running your stock engine. But if you're going to try and do more high horsepower racing, um, streetcar stuff, um, you're going to want to make sure the stuff's right. It's going to make your engine a hundred times better. And trust me on that. Um, so what we're going to do here is we just got this new ultrasonic behind me that I'm going to show you. We're going to pop these in there. We're going to clean them and we're going to take them apart. That way we don't have to work with all dirty parts. But Let's check it out, because this thing's cool. Okay, so this is the new ultrasonic cleaner. I actually didn't buy it online from Amazon. There was a lady around the corner that had a pallet of stuff, and I went and bought it. I got it for under 200 bucks. So it's a eight gallon. Um, it's gonna work perfect for what we need to do. We can actually fit a cylinder head in there. But check it out and watch the cleaning power. This is going to make these look brand new um you probably won't believe it also you leave down something to talk about because i could talk about a bunch of other stuff it's just i'm trying to talk about things that are kind of correlating with what i'm building and doing but i really want to just share information with you guys um i want you guys to have a good experience when you work on stuff and not get stirred away from it because you can do it like you can do it, trust me, it's just gonna take a little bit of time. Um, I have friends that don't have much car experience that have pulled and replaced engines just because they think they can do it. So go ahead and do it, but watch this. Watch this cleaning power. Yeah, I will break these apart after. 
I've only picked multiple times, so. Now watch the dirt come off of this, guys. Done. Okay, so this is about 15 minutes of cleaning. Let me show you what it looks like. As you can see, that was just 15 minutes in there. And look how much nicer they look. Let's give them another round, maybe two. And uh, I bet they look brand new. Watch. So um, they have been in there a while, um, probably about two hours or so. Not, you know, with going back and pushing it on and doing other stuff. Um, let's pull them out and see. You guys saw what they looked like before, so. So let me get these rinsed off and dried. Okay guys, so check it out. I got these looking really good. You remember what they looked like before? They look like a brand new rod now. Okay, so. Once you get your rods all nice and clean, shiny, as you can see, it is in a way better condition and state than it was before it got clean. I mean, these are looking... They look brand new. They're not brand new, but <clears throat> that's going to be the end of the, this video and this part. Um, what you want to go on and do next is you're going to want to go ahead and look up the housing bore spec. You're going to want to set up your bore gauge and you're going to want to measure them. Obviously, you're going to want to torque them to spec and then measure them and see if they're within spec. If they're within spec, then... Uh, you can run them depending on what kind of build you're going to do whether it's stock or racing it's up to you uh, but if they're within the spec that they give you you should be okay alright uh, stay tuned for the next part and I can show you how to do all the next steps